Welcome to Build Your Dream Network. I'm Kelly Hoey. I see people struggling to connect effectively all the time, so I created this podcast to help you master your network building needs. Whether you're seeking a new job, looking for a promotion, or scaling your business, you need a network, and you're in the right place to get the advice you need. And don't worry, my advice is real. It's actionable and practical because it's the advice I follow and is what has transformed my career from the traditional to the unexpected. So let's get started. Okay, let's shake up the humdrum standard format professional bio this week on the podcast. Now, I'm not talking about the resume job seekers circulate to potential employers or submit to hiring managers. Don't get silly creative with that document. Like the person who wrote their credentials onto a football and sent them to a friend of mine who worked for the Canadian Football League. Don't do that. It makes for a great story years later, but no. Well, the resume was noticed on the football. My friend was not impressed with that level of ingenuity. And no, the sender did not get an interview. What I'm thinking about is the professional bio that appears on your firm's website or your company's website and gets circulated at conferences you speak at. The bio highlighting your expertise. The bio that becomes so narrowly funneled because of the standards in the industry It's hard to distinguish your credentials from the expertise and talents of your competitors. Let me give you a case in point. During a presentation on the topic of online networking in the New York office of a global law firm, I pulled up the bio of an unnamed partner, asking the attendees to guess who it was. The audience studied the bio, mused and debated whether it was someone in the L.A. office or the disputes practice or that recent hire in Chicago. I let them go on for a minute or so, to my amusement, and then I gave them a reality check. The bio belonged to a partner at a competitor law firm. Adhering to a very rigid protocol of what is standard or customary industry practice when it comes to highlighting your professional experience could be placing you at a competitive disadvantage. When everyone sounds the same, can anyone stand out? If your skills are interchangeable with every other professional peer, why would a client pursue the opportunity to work with you or, for that matter, pay a premium for your work? If you're indistinguishable, you're at risk of being replaced. Now, I'm recalling a friend who landed a client because the gentleman wanted an Irish Catholic divorce attorney. Whether my friend was a decent attorney or not was irrelevant. But that's a bit of a haphazard way of being sought out for work. It's not exactly the most reliable marketing funnel. I'm going to pause for a quick second to mention expertise. This entire discussion on writing a more dynamic and imaginative bio assumes you have real expertise, solid experience, recognize industry chops. Go back to the resume written on the football story I shared before. Presenting your credentials on a football doesn't mean you have the qualifications necessary for a role in sports. With that clarity, let's get back to ditching the boring bio. One of my favorite, not in the least bit boring bios was posted by a tax attorney. That's right, I'm not joking, a tax attorney. The late Marty Ginsburg, husband of a certain Supreme Court justice, was an accomplished tax professional and law school professor with an outsized personality. In a sea of equally qualified legal professionals with similarly wonderful qualifications, Marty managed to stand out. I'm going to share a few of my favorite bits from Marty's bio. On his education, he says, Professor Ginsburg attended Cornell University, stood very low in his class, and played on the golf team. He graduated at the top of his class at Harvard Law School, which in those years did not field a golf team. As for his industry involvement, he notes, From 1984 to 1987, he was a member of the ABA Tax Section Council, where he performed no useful service at all, 
Celebrating that unique achievement in 2006, the tax section gave Professor Ginsburg its Lifetime Distinguished Service Award. I hope you're catching the humor. As for awards, this line, well, it makes me chuckle every time I read it. In 1993, the National Women's Political Caucus gave Professor Ginsburg its Good Guy Award. History reveals no prior instance of a tax lawyer held to be a good guy or even a decent sort. Marty's use of humor, clearly not everyone will find it as amusing as me, causes his personality to leap off the page or computer screen, as this bio appeared on the website of the firm he worked at. For many potential clients, personality fills in the blank to the question of why would I work with this person? Until a client meets you face to face, the way to show you're approachable is primarily with your words. The way to start a conversation with potential clients is not to shower them with your qualifications, but to pull them in with your personality. A couple more examples. My friend Monica Parker is the founder of Hatch Analytics. She's an expert on behavioral and organizational change in the workplace. In the summary box on her LinkedIn profile, Monica highlights prior jobs she's held, tying those experiences to the company she's building today, and does this in a way that invites conversation. Here's what she says. Beginning her career as a museum exhibition designer for the Wilsonian in Miami Beach, she has a solid foundation of knowledge of people-centered design. Her work as a homicide investigator defending death row inmates for Florida's Department of Justice brought her a more intimate appreciation of the impact of environment on mental health and behavior. Those two lines make for a far more interesting conversation than what are your rates and who have you worked for? As Monica has shared with me, her experience defending death row inmates isn't the reason clients have hired her, but sharing that work experience provides potential clients with a glimpse of who she is before that first critical conversation. It starts a dialogue, and through conversation on something she is passionate about, a stronger connection can be made than simply reciting degrees earned and past projects. Let me give you another example. The private equity fund management market is a crowded one. Lots of equally qualified fund managers. So being yourself can be a competitive advantage. A friend who guides private equity fund managers through the fundraising process advises them to sprinkle in a little personality in order to stand out. One example she shared with me was the client whose previous jobs included ski instructor and airline baggage handler. These details serve as conversation starters, as who hasn't feared losing or who hasn't lost some luggage, and gives a little glimpse into the personality of someone. Um, if you're trusting with your money, can you trust them with your baggage? As for my friend's resume, all her past Wall Street experience is great and somewhat expected for someone in her field. So what people really want to talk about when they first meet my friend as a result of seeing her speak on an industry panel is how she got her pilot's license, a small detail that she used to leave off of her bio. Personal details, whether it's work experience or an unusual hobby or accomplishment or confident language that reveals your unique personality well, this all lifts your bio from bland to intriguing and memorable. Remember, clients hire people. So who is the authentic, real you? Here are some build your dream network ideas to spruce up your bio and hopefully ignite deeper conversations with potential clients. Define success on your own terms. In many professions, it is standard to include the names of educational institutions. But standard doesn't mean you have to. And if you do, you don't have to list them in the standard way. Recall Marty's attended Cornell University stood very low in his class and played on the golf team. Remember that line. 
Think about what sets you apart from your competitors. Okay, maybe your client work sets you apart, and if that's the case, list it. For everyone else, the summer job you had 15 years ago may be the distinguishing factor. Or perhaps it's the unusual way you solve challenges or close deals. One venture capitalist I know who is an avid cyclist typically proposes a long bike ride for a first pitch meeting with startups. Why on earth would you do that, I imagine you're thinking? Well, if you run into this VC, you can ask her yourself. Remember that a one-size bio does not fit all situations. You should customize your bio for each client or audience scenario. For example, I sent my bio off recently, editing way back to where I earned my undergraduate degree, the University of Victoria, and what I studied when I was earning my undergraduate degree, political science. As the audience for an upcoming talk are college-aged, career-focused students in Canada. Finally, think about which piece of your new bio goes on LinkedIn, Twitter, and other digital platforms. Other digital platforms could include a conference where you're speaking as a panelist or a charity where you serve as a board member. That's it for this week. I'll be back here next week with more network building suggestions. Thank you for listening to Build Your Dream Network. Stay connected and don't miss a networking insight by subscribing to the podcast. And while you're there, I'd love you to rate and review the show too. Are you looking for more networking advice? Pick up a copy of my book, Build Your Dream Network. It's your guide to modern networking. I'd like to hear your networking questions, tips, and ideas. Connect with me via my website, jkellyhoey.co. You'll find links to all my social media accounts, plus a contact form to email me your questions. I'm Kelly Hoey, and I'll be back again next week to tackle your networking challenges.